Hundreds of thousands of years before the rise of the Empire, a brutal war for control of the world that would become Coruscant took place between the alien Tongs and the human Zell. The Tongs considered themselves Dawurda Verda, or the Shadow Warriors. They were eventually driven away from Coruscant and forced into the Outer Rim, conquering the planet Mandalore while it was still beyond the galactic frontier around 7,000 years before the time of the Empire. The Republic began to hear rumors about ferocious crusaders who waged religious wars in the name of their god, Kad Harangir, though these Tong Mandalorians largely avoided direct contact with the Republic. After conquering Fennel and gaining its further developed ships and technology, the Mandalorians used their new arms to conquer more and more worlds on the Rim. While some were completely razed, others elected to welcome the Crusaders and were spared, like the humans on Concord Dawn, and the territory of Mandalorian space was established. Though the Crusaders were made up of many clans that had their own petty conflicts, they all obeyed the commands of a single leader they knew as Mandalore. As the centuries passed, the Tongs under the rule of Mandalore the Indomitable shifted from waging war in the name of a single god to worshipping the idea of war itself. They struck at the core of the galaxy, devastating worlds like Navoda, Basilisk, and Quar. They intended to next attack at Empress Teta, but these plans changed when Ulek Queldroma, a fallen Jedi Knight who was now a Sith Lord, bested Mandalore the Indomitable in single combat on Quar. Under the command of Queldroma and Exar Kun, the Mandalorians attacked the Republic directly at Ferost and Coruscant. Mandalore the Indomitable fell while fighting the Republic at Onderon, and his mask and title were succeeded by Mandalore the Ultimate. Under the Ultimate's rule, the Crusaders returned to Mandalorian space, altering their societal structure to solidify their territory, and allow members of non-Tong species to prove themselves in battle and earn a full place among the Mandalorians. The Ultimate led his diverse Neo-Crusaders in conquering worlds along the Republic's border like Cathar, though the Republic wouldn't take action against them for a decade. Using a fleet of warships, some captured and some built by their own shipyards, the Mandalorians broke Republic lines with an invasion of Taris and attacks on other worlds, including Ord Mantell and Iridonia. The Republic launched their own counterattacks and war broke out. The Neo Crusaders suffered a setback on Jebel when their large army was turned into mindless Ragul's that were bombed into nothingness by Mandalore the Ultimate's second in command, Cassus Fett. The Jedi Order refused to join the war effort, despite many of its numbers disagreeing with the decision, which led to the Jedi known as Revan defying the Council and leading a number of Jedi Crusaders into the war effort. Under Revan's leadership, the Republic's military had several advantages of its own, including Interdictor class and Hammerhead cruisers. Revan cornered the Mandalorians at Malachor V and used a superweapon to fracture the world and devastate the Mandalorian forces. Mandalore the Ultimate died during the confrontation, which the Mandalorians would come to call Ani La Akan, or the Great Last Battle. The Mandalorians surrendered to the Republic and the clans retreated back to Mandalorian space, fractured without a strong leadership. Many Mandalorians went on to become bounty hunters or mercenaries fighting for credits. One of these mercenaries, Candorus Ordo, became allies with a changed Revan and reclaimed the mask of Mandalore. Faced with the task of reuniting the fractured clans, Candorus became known as Mandalore the Preserver. Centuries passed without a leader for the Mandalorians and the emerging Sith Empire sought to bring the clans under their control by ensuring the success and rise of a Mandalorian gladiator in the Geonosis arenas. This warrior became the new Mandalore and rallied his people against the Jedi once more. The Mandalorians initiated a successful blockade of the Hydean Way until the Republic managed to break it with the help of smugglers. Losing support in the aftermath of this defeat, the Mandalore began a great hunt that ended when its champion, Artis Locke, defeated this Mandalore the Lesser in a duel. Artis became known as Mandalore the Vindicated and initially focused on building his power base. 
a faction of Mandalorians rose up believing that they should instead ally with the Republic, but Locke defeated them and kept the well-paying tenuous alliance they already had with the Sith. Locke would eventually be defeated in battle against Zakul's eternal empire and succeeded by the ex-mercenary Shay Visla. As Mandalore the Avenger, Visla joined the Republic and Imperial forces to fight against the Eternal Empire until its defeat. Under Visla, the clans would focus on rebuilding themselves and the wider galaxy, despite some internal tensions. Millennia later, around a thousand years prior to the formation of the Empire, the Kandorian Plague devastated Mandalorian space. After losing his family and most of his clan, a mercenary named Ago Awod led the Mandalorians into regaining some of their former strength, becoming Mandalore the Uniter. During the New Sith Wars, the Mandalorians emerged as a regional power capable of protecting surrounding sectors for a price. After the wars with the Sith came to an end, the independent Mandalorians resisted Republic efforts to restrict the size of sector defense forces. Some clan leaders attempted to remind their leadership of how the Republic had defeated them in the previous war, but Mandalorians were not the type to back down from a fight. Judicial forces working with the Jedi launched attacks on Mandalorian space in 738 BBY, bombarding key worlds and occupying the area with a caretaker government headed by those leaders who had initially advised peace. This decades-long occupation caused a split in Mandalorian society and saw the creation of a new Mandalorian sect that still resented the Republic but favored neutrality over a doomed conflict. Thanks to the Republic, this faction held most of the power in the Mandalorian government. Many of the traditional Mandalorians that sought conflict were exiled to the Moon Concordia or became mercenaries like their ancestors. While the Mandalores of this era were more like their predecessors in their desire for tradition, the new Mandalorians refused to recognize their authority. In the final decades of the Republic, the mercenary Jaster Mareel became Mandalore and led his true Mandalorians in an attempt to reinstate their ancient warrior codes. The true Mandalorians came into conflict with another sect, known as Death Watch, who believed the only way to restore honor was through war with the new Mandalorians. These three factions of Mandalorian society fragmented the clans against each other. Mareel died in battle against Death Watch, and was succeeded as Mandalore by his adopted son, Jango Fett. Death Watch managed to play the true Mandalorians and the Jedi against each other in a vicious battle on Gali Dran, that resulted in the decimation of Fett's forces. With the true Mandalorians out of the way, Death Watch started a bloody war against the peaceful new Mandalorian regime on their homeworld. Though Mandalore was devastated, and new Mandalorian leader Adonai Kryze died during the fighting, Death Watch was ultimately defeated and exiled. Having turned to bounty hunting, Jango Fett was selected to become the clone template for the army being manufactured for the Republic by the Kaminoans. Fett called dozens of scattered traditional Mandalorians to Kamino to serve as instructors for these clone troopers. This group, which included Kal Skirata and Waylon Vau, became known as the Sival Dar. In a twist of irony, the Mandalorians that had waged war against the Republic for millennia became the figurative and literal basis for the army that would defend it. As the Suval Dar trained the Republic's army, Death Watch resurged under Pre Visla's leadership and continued its campaign against the new Mandalorian government, which was now led by Adonai's daughter, Satine. Once war broke out across the galaxy, Satine and Mandalore became the leaders of the Council of Neutral Systems, which wished to take no part in the conflict. Visla allied himself with Dooku and the Separatists in an attempt to gain the upper hand, though their early attempts to undermine the pacifist faction were thwarted by Satine and the Jedi. Dooku eventually betrayed Death Watch, leaving Visla and his fighters to seek new strategies. They rescued the surviving Sith Lord Maul and his brother from deep space and forged a tenuous alliance, coercing criminal factions like the Pikes and Black Sun to back their plans as well. After completing a successful coup against the new Mandalorian government by exploiting pre-existing corruption, Visla and Maul turned on one another. They fought to the death in the Mandalorian throne room in a battle that ended with Maul on the throne and Visla's head on the floor. 
Maul's brief reign as ruler of Mandalore would come to an end when his former Sith Master came to the planet and brought him to heal, leaving the planet in turmoil. When the chaos settled, the next leader of the Mandalorian culture came in the form of an ex-Arc Trooper named Spar. After deserting from the clone army, Spar became friends with a local chieftain on Mandalore named Fen Shisa, who encouraged him to take up Jango's former title. Now known as Mandalore the Resurrector, Spar led the Mandalorians to take up their old ways again in the wake of Duchess Satine's death. These Mandalorian protectors under Spar sided with the Separatists to continue their war against the Jedi and the Republic. This campaign concluded until a devastating defeat at Norval II left only a handful of survivors, including Spar and Shisa. Spar stepped down from the role of Mandalore in shame, leaving it vacant until the rise of the Empire prompted Shisa to take it. The Imperials kept Mandalore in an iron grip, mining it for Beskar, but Shisa led his men against them in secret. Shisa's efforts to keep Mandalore strong were successful, but he was hunted down almost 20 years after the Empire fell by Jango's clone son, Boba Fett, on a bounty hunting job. The pair were forced to work together to survive until Shisa was mortally wounded. As he died, Shisa asked Boba to continue his father's legacy as the next Mandalore. After the Clone Wars decades before, Fett had tried to live as a normal Mandalorian on Concord Dawn with his wife, Sintas Vel, and daughter, Aylin, but he was exiled after killing his superior officer as revenge for a terrible crime. With Shisa's death, Fett finally returned to his people in the era when they would need him the most. Millennia earlier, Kandorus Ordo once recounted a time in the Crispin system on the edge of the galaxy when his men stumbled upon what had seemed to be an asteroid that was capable of firing blasts capable of melting through the Mandalorians before fleeing. This was a precursor to the threat the Mandalorians would face under Boba Fett's leadership, the extra-galactic Uzong Vong invaders. When the invasion began, Fett made a duplicitous alliance with the Vong to keep Mandalore safe, secretly feeding information to the New Republic while preparing for the day when the Vong would attack. When the Vong realized this plan, they launched an attack to destroy the Mandalorians. Despite many casualties, the Mandalorians repelled the invaders and took the fight to them across the galaxy. Once the Vong were defeated, Fett returned his focus to rebuilding both Mandalore and what remained of his family. He would lose his daughter to Darth Cadus, and found his revenge by training the Sith Lord's sister, Jaina Solo, to defeat him. This effort was ultimately successful, but it came at the cost of Cadus releasing a nanovirus on Mandalore that prevented Fett and any of his line from ever returning to the planet. Fett never gave up on trying to find an antidote that would allow his return. A century later, the Mandalorians under Cherman Ordo were hired by the Galactic Alliance to fight against the resurgent Sith. In the chaos of a battle, Ordo was felled by the efforts of one of his own men, Yaga Orch, who rose to the title of Mandalore after him. Orch had been ordered by someone in power to keep the Mandalorians out of the new war, but young Mandalorian Hondo Carr resolved to expose him for this. Despite the lack of Mandalorian aid, the Galactic Alliance was able to defeat the Sith and restore freedom shortly after. <laughs>